Down the years, they will tell the story of what happened today, of how the winner etched his name in the record books, of how he became the greatest the sport has ever seen, or how he claimed his biggest victory, denying his opponent that coveted landmark. They will talk of how the victor dared to dream, of how he pushed the boundaries, of how on the cusp of greatness he did not falter, or of how, with the odds against him, he seized his moment. Our hero played in swashbuckling fashion, they will say. He was adventurous, daring, fearless. This was the day, they will say, that the King of Kings was crowned. Or they will talk of how the former champion was dethroned. Whoever wins, his story will be told. Finale du simple messieurs Roland Garros 2023. Premier jour entré sur le cours va disputer sa troisième finale en grand chelem. Il est norvégien. Voici Cosme Ruud. History will be made today. The word legend is often overused in sporting parlance, but in recent years we've been privileged in this sport to have three men who have earned that status. Yet only one man can be crowned the greatest of all time. Is today the day that Novak Djokovic earns that mantle by winning a record Grand Slam number 23? Or will Kasper Ruud be able to stop him and cause an almighty upset to become the first ever Norwegian Grand Slam champion? So many questions, so much intrigue, so much on the line. And to help me answer those questions, as well as no doubt many more, 17-time Grand Slam champion Mark Whitford joins myself, Pete Hodges, in the commentary box for this final. Mark, your thoughts ahead of this one. Pete, it's always a pleasure to be with you. We get to call another major final here at Roland Garros. And, and this man, it is uh, the, the possibilities of a history-making day. It is a momentous occasion for Novak Djokovic against uh, Kasper Ruud, who has performed uh, very admirably to reach the final here for the second consecutive year. So, gentlemen, after the coin toss, there's going to be a picture with the kids and without the kids, please, okay? So we have the net machine, 25 seconds between points. You know where the clock here, the clocks are, and in front too. Towers, let's say you have the grey dot, and Novak, you have the red dot, okay? Do you have any questions? Zoe, you do the coin toss? Yes? Ball or racket? Ball. Ball. Allez, vas-y. Ball. Serve. Stay. Well, something a little different. We've been seeing most players say they'll receive first. Thank you. Rude may be feeling he needs something a little different. He said in his press conference he needs to probably play the best match of his you, life. He's going to try and play without any pressure. Just try and play freely and enjoy the moment. So opting to serve first after winning the toss. What did you make of that decision, Mark? Well. Look, I, I, just before we came on air, I, I actually went back and had a look at my notes from last year. 
in each of the three sets that he played against Rafa, he went down an early service break, either the first service game or the second service game. So, you know, ideally the start has to be strong, has to come out of the gates fast, and maybe by opting to serve first today, it sends an early message to Djokovic. But perhaps, even though he's come back into the final, perhaps a surprise finalist this year in Casper mm. in terms of the form he had coming in here. OK, he won Estoril, did get to the, the semi-finals of Rome, but other than that, it, it had been a difficult season, but he's, he's built his form really well over the two weeks. Yeah, it, he has. Uh, you know, from the first match, the first round against Ema, I actually called that match over on uh, Long Glen, and it just seems, there we go, the, the run through to the final. It was just a, an, a, a, an unsteady first match. I, I think a very soft first three rounds, uh, or almost four rounds, uh, to play Nicholas Jari in the fourth round. That's a, a bonus. The real test was against Holger Rune, and I feel like that that's where he really stepped up. Yeah, it was a very impressive third set against the Dane, of course, that all Scandinavian duo. Talking Scandinavians, there is his father. He's a very fine player himself, but all of his accolades, being the best Norwegian in this, that and the other, have been surpassed by his son. As we see the, uh, the, the coaching team there as well. Of course, spends a lot of time at the Rafael Nadal Academy. You will see Pedro Clark sat alongside Christian Rude. As for Novak Djokovic, I mean, I really actually enjoyed listening to both of their, their press conferences purely for the contrast in terms of Djokovic saying, look, I know how to do this. I know what I'm going to do on my day off. I know what I'm going to do when I get up. I know how to deal with the pressure. He used the, the, the known parlance pressure as a privilege, saying it gives him motivation. Yet with Kasper Ruud, he's saying, no, I want to enjoy myself today. What is it that makes Novak Djokovic though so great for well, you? It, it, and it, a formula that he follows, given that, that 22 slams uh, that he's won, there's been a number of times he's been in the final and, and unsuccessful, but it, it's a routine that he prides himself uh, with, and he's worked his way into the tournament because probably fair, fair comment is he's been a little scratchy heading into this year's tournament, but he is at a different juncture with his career. He's priming himself for these Grand Slam events. Yeah, he's said throughout, hasn't he, in terms of even in the build-up to this event, he gets up in the morning now for Grand Slams, to win Grand Slam titles, as we see Goran Ivanisevic there, alongside Carlos Gomez Herrera. Is that Tom Brady there as well in the second row? Well, he had Mike Tyson here, who I believe is still here, and that is indeed Tom Brady sat next to Yelena. I mean, he's getting all the big names in sport to come and watch him, although I'm sure they are all putting their hands up saying, I want to watch another legend in sport. And they, they, don't, they don't come much bigger than Novak Djokovic. I know he sent also a, a text to Nikola Jokic, the basketballer, yes. who's, who's possibly about to make history with Denver Nuggets, right. maybe winning their first NBA championships. The head-to-head -head record there, Pete, that just flashed up. What's your take? Well, I mean, it, it's tough to have much of a deeper take than it's been dominant. I mean, eight straight sets. Rude has never won a set against Djokovic. So, I mean, as we look at the, the time spent on court, I'd imagine you'd say that that isn't particularly relevant because particularly how that semi-final finished. For you, Mark, you know, most of the statistics, of course, go against Kasper Rude today. What's got to happen for the upset to happen today? Ed, it's funny that we describe it as an upset the number four player defeating the number three player, it can happen. Uh, and of course, there, there's a the possibility, reality, if Kasper Ruud comes out and plays the match of the tournament and probably the match of his clay court season. Needs, needs it to be operating from the first serve. It's a, a strong first serve. Uh, that second serve needs to stand up to uh, sending it down to the best returner in our sport and he needs that forehand that's the major weapon for Kasper Ruud is the, the forehand boy oh boy it needs to be heavy and firing into the corners this has been one of the biggest shots throughout the tournament he's hitting the forehand bigger than almost any other player but will it be big enough to trouble Novak Djokovic who seemed to deal with the Alcaraz forehand very well in the semi-finals so we are set and ready Kasper Ruud in his third Grand Slam final Third in his last five Grand Slam tournaments, yet to win one. He's hoping third time will be a charm. Up against Novak Djokovic, chasing history 
and looking to become the first man to win 23 Grand Slam titles. It will be rude to get this final underway. Incidentally, 17-time Grand Slam champion Mark Woodford alongside himself, Pete Hodges. And we will talk you through this encounter. That little jewel might just help Rude to settle. This was beaten comfortably here last year against Rafael Nadal. Picked up just the six games in that final. And as you were saying earlier, Mark, vital that he makes a good start, having gone a breakdown early in each of those sets in 2022. Well, how much of an advantage is it for Rude today that he has been in this situation before? It's a plus. It's a positive, has a positive impact. And, and don't overlook, you, you said that the third Grand Slam final that he has made in the last five, that's, that's significant. That shows the, the calibre of Kaspar Rude shouldn't be taken lightly. It's a good start from the Norwegian. Look to his box. Love service hold, having chosen to serve first. And looks like it was a good choice. And he's looking to claim his first Grand Slam title here. He's also looking to beat a top five player at Grand Slam level for the first time. Actually, hadn't picked up a set until last year's US Open final against Alcaraz, where he won the second set there. Yeah, that, the lone top five win on clay uh, is against City Pass. And in a best of three set format, you would think that maybe it, could, it can turn into a bit of a sprint. But at Grand Slam level, that's where that, that just a question mark over Rude's ability. Can he sustain that level for three sets? Backing up the line from Djokovic, first time we've seen that. I know many analysts think that could well be key today. Yeah, that is the shot. Uh, even in that point, he was able to force Rude into playing uh, a squash-like forehand. And once that uh, shot is engaged, you, you lose your, your depth, you lose your weight of shots, and Djokovic started to take a, a better control in that rally.
Incidentally, this is the seventh roll on Garros final for Novak Djokovic. As you see Kasper Ruud shaking his hand off there. We don't want any more cramping early on in matches. Of course, it was the hand that was initially the issue for, for Alcaraz before the whole body started to spasm. But in terms of first sets won in Roland Garros finals, when he's gone on to win the title, he's never won the first set. Yet he's won the first set twice before and gone on to lose in the final here at Roland Garros. Well, I think you're probably referring to those matches against Rafa. And you... you I, I'll, I'll put out there Djokovic's record against top five on clay. It's 26 wins, 26 losses. But 24 of those losses have come to against Nadal and Federer. And this is probably the best surface, the best opportunity for Rude to be playing Djokovic on in the final. We were saying beforehand, though, for Rude to have any chance of winning this. Uh, we need a little bit of lack of focus from, from Djokovic. I suppose there were, there were question marks coming in in terms of he was so focused for that match against Alcaraz. You just wonder whether that will have taken an effect on him. Forced errors early on here from the world number three. And the forehand of Rude. On the count. Having an effect in that last rally. I've got a kind bounce and made it difficult for Djokovic. The Rude forehand packs power, but also has plenty of rotation, height, clearance over the net. different there from Rude, just trying to high ball and slow ball Djokovic with plenty of spin. Calder. Yeah, he has the RPMs at 3,300 through the tournament to Rude compared to 2,800 from Djokovic. That's off the forehand wing. Yeah, 130 Ks. Average speed as well. That's just a, a fraction more than yeah. Djokovic. Hit on the forehand for Djokovic to deal with. And there's another break point for Kasper Ruud. And generally, we do see Djokovic, uh, his ability to absorb pace and depth. His court positioning generally a lot tighter to the baseline than Ruud. Oh, that last point, it's like he went back just to try and deal with what was coming from Ruud's racket. Still made an error. Just about to say, 10 of the 11 points over five shots. Djokovic having enough of that rally early on. Make that 10 of 12, saving the second break point. Yannick Noah, sat court side. Yeah, sitting next to Gilles Moraton, the president of the FFT. Anniversary of his triumph here, last Frenchman to win Roland Garros. 
put on a bit of a, a rock show, didn't he? He did. Pre-tournament. And even had a game of doubles today. Played with Mansour Barami against John McEnroe and Mats Volander. First game continues to wriggle on. Just thinking back to that quarter-final match with Hogaruna. He was trying to achieve depth, height and depth, wasn't he? He didn't allow Rune to get in tight to the baseline. There was a bit more firepower from the Danes end of the court. Rude really took control of that match in sets one and two. That's a lovely combination. So he stands very deep behind uh, the baseline to return anyone's first serve, Kasper Rude. And uh, if he doesn't get a good strike, that's the the opportunity for Novak off a forehand and backhand and strike the ball into the open court. Still can't get out of the game. Interesting, Mark, as well. I mean, he was talking in the press conference on how he knows how to manage situations going into Grand Slam finals. Djokovic, of course he does, this being his 34th more than any other male. In his first game, by the way, he's only missed one first serve. It doesn't feel like he's hitting it full on. He's just maybe trying to find a rhythm and building it up. But only won five out of 11 points when he has found that first serve. Not as fast as Kasper Ruud with the first serve, but so accurate. Yeah, I think it's managing his game. That there is intention that, that, and purpose that he is coming out in this opening service game from Djokovic. Oh, monstrous. Plenty of time to wind up and made it count. And maybe that's why he's trying to get first serves into play. This is what can happen, especially if Rude is able to jump around and utilize the forehand. Incidentally, Rude's hit 105 forehand winners coming into this final. Well clear of the rest of the field. He'll be looking to get around and strike the forehand here as well. Still a little out of sync at the back of the court is Novak Djokovic. Rude. Another chance for the world number four to steal an early break. Great defence from Rude. 
And we were talking, how was he going to cause the upset? Well, there's an early tick in the box for the Norwegian. Gets an early break. Far better start this time around in the Roland Garros final compared to last year. Yeah, that's a, a boost. Certainly to see your opponent, even if it is Djokovic, miss an overhead in that manner. 11 minutes, the previous game. Becomes a relatively significant game. I've seen dips from Djokovic. The first set against Hachanov. In fact, the first two sets in the quarter final against the Russian. Djokovic described them as his, his worst two sets of the tournament. Before playing a, a perfect tiebreaker to turn things around. by much. I think that Djokovic is circling it would suggest it is wide and confirmed by Damien Dumasoua. Kaza. you believe it? It was a huge forehand to get Djokovic on the stretch, but this time unable to back it up. Yeah, I think he changed his mind at the last minute. When the, a ball is off pace and you're waiting for it to come into your strike zone, you, you're able to see your opponent move. And I think his preference is to go with the off forehand. Djokovic headed in that direction. Even in that replay, you could see that he didn't quite hit it cleanly, Rude. Chance of Nolle ringing around Chatrier early on. Errors and Djokovic being so aware of uh, how his game and opponent's games are, are evolving in a match, and we would expect that to be tidied up. Not necessarily an unforced error there, but it was a, a strong forehand after the serve, too hot to handle. Elena looking a little edgy right now. First time that she's been able to watch Djokovic at these championships. Oh. 
Calvin. First double for Root. Paints the line this time. Ah, what that's good. That he does. Aided by the fact he, he moved inside the court to meet that forehand. Three or four shorter, quick steps. point of view the worry was that this final might be a little one-sided it's one-sided the other way so far excellent start from Casper Ruud as he backs up the break for a three love lead Well, a couple of competitive, lengthy service games for both players, apart from the first opening service game of Root. He won that to love. The next two games, spirited. And a key one for Root to consolidate the break of serve. No, it's humid, but one or twice. Djokovic on the change of ends at the moment. There's just some pitches from the early running, but sitting on the change of ends with an ice towel around his neck. Well, if Djokovic was to go on and win today, we all know about it being the, the 23rd Grand Slam, it would mean he would win. He'd be the first ever male player to win three or more Grand Slams in each of the four majors. It also mean he would go back to world number one for the 388th week. There is a lot at stake. And it, I mean, he got asked about the pressure of that being on his shoulders coming into this. And he did just say, look, I always have pressure. I, I see it as a, a, as a motivation. And it's not going to be any different today. Well, remember last year he was going for the calendar slam, or, or the sorry, the year before, going for the calendar slam, where he reached the final of the US Open, played Medvedev. Medvedev obviously rose to the challenge, but it wasn't the Djokovic that we saw in the other three victories, nor what we had seen in the lead up to that final on that day. He was going for some history there. Today is history making moments as well. He is playing, in my opinion, for the title of all-time great. That's going to send some shivers up your spine, isn't it? Especially someone like Novak Djokovic, who we know loves to chase those records. But maybe he's playing the long game here. The start he's made, as I say. Two times he's won. Now Roland Garros beat Andy Murray in four sets from a set down in 2016. We know he went two sets to Love down, 2021 to Sitsipas. When a set up 
against Nadal in 2014 and lost in four. Same deal against Vavrinka in 2015, losing in four. And sometimes the information that, that we provide for the viewers at home, not sure that the players are aware of it, but I think on that mm -hmm. stat, Djokovic would be aware. I think he's more aware, isn't he, of more stats than most of the other yes. players. Yep. Nerve settling game from Novak Djokovic. A little bit of a shaky start going down an early break, but a love service hold to get himself on the board in this final, albeit a lot later than he would have liked. Taking 25 minutes. Not missing a first serve in that game either. Before this match, Mark said his game plan would have to be better than it has been on previous occasions against Djokovic. What have you made of his game plan so far? What's he doing well that is, is causing the serve issues? I don't see it right now, a distinct plan. I think he's benefited from Djokovic's sluggish start. Tennis once again. It's those subtleties for me that makes watching Novak Djokovic such a joy. In terms of most players would only just be able to get that one back into play if they'd even be able to just get a racket on it. Djokovic has his opponent on the back foot. Tactically perfect point from Djokovic, but can't apply the finish. Yep, it moving rude corner to corner. And the backhand perhaps it's getting up a fraction too high. The base. And see the split legs of Djokovic and just the finish after making contact with the ball. The, the sense that wasn't in the strike zone. <laughs> Another really good hold from Casper Ruud. And that little turnaround and fist clench to his team tells you 
He is very happy with the start he has made. Leads 4-1 first set. Rodman, So the last point, that's a, a handy second serve. Had some pace into the body. And only a defensive response by Djokovic. An offense by Rude. Giving himself every opportunity right now just to maintain that lead. Early service break to the number four seed, Kasper Rude. One thing that the route seems to be doing a little differently, Mark, as we see over court Philip Chatrier, incidentally with the inclement weather coming in, the roof did initially start to shut before the final started, then they reopened it, so that would be something a little different. Of course, we've had beautiful sunshine, barely a cloud in the sky all fortnight. Different today, so we may end up with the roof shut at some point, but for now it stays open. Djokovic down 1 4. One thing that we are seeing that's a little different from Rude today, but I've noticed it seems to be hitting with a lot more height. And just ask the Hawkeye guys uh, that question. And 17 centimeters higher he's hitting the forehand today than he has been in previous rounds and something similar Nadal did in the final against Djokovic he also played with more height more shape and Djokovic struggled that day as well he's hitting the ball 12 oh, centimeters yeah. higher on the forehand 22 centimeters higher on the backhand today than he has been throughout the tournament Djokovic so maybe that's just taken a little bit of time to adjust to, but smart from the Norwegian so far. And maybe that is the different game plan he was talking about. Well, he wouldn't want to be giving it hit into at the strike zone of Djokovic. And, uh, off the hip, Djokovic is uh, quite lethal. Let me... the right way but couldn't control the ball a little surprised that he didn't back away he was just held his ground he was trying to absorb what was provided to him by Djokovic I wonder about that tactic as well, Mark. Isn't we also have to remember Casper Rude is where does he train? Rafael Nadal Tennis Academy and mentioned that final in 2020 where I think many, including us, were, were thinking it was going to be a five-set thriller between Nadal and Djokovic. And Nadal won the first two sets, six love, six two. So I just wonder whether, of course, Rude might have had a bit of access to that information and what Nadal did on that day and what Djokovic didn't enjoy. As we know, Djokovic, one of the best chess players in the business, throwing in the serve and volley. In the second game in this opening set.
Sensational tennis. And it's not an area that he is comfortable in. He's adequate. That shot is uh, kind of the, the vogue volley for Rude. That's a, a high standard drop volley into the corner of the service box. the best in the business at neutralizing the point Djokovic we know Rude likes the serve and the forehand but he was able to get that rally level pegging as we see Kylian Mbappe and Zlatan Ibrahimovic legends of all sports everywhere on Chatrier today Second time he's missed an overhead. Saw this as well with Sasha Zverev in the semi final. Well, Zverev uh, probably injured coming into that match and just no firepower in those legs. I think Djokovic is probably renowned for not having a. I mean, again, it's adequate, but it's, it's not one of the stronger parts of his game, the overhead generally just tries to get it back into play. He's missed them on big points so far today on. When he was facing break point, that one would have put him up 15-40. That wild forehand does give him a break point. Well, the good thing is that for Djokovic, those that are following him, just starting to maybe find a little bit of range. Even though he missed the overhead, the point was his. Has an opportunity to break back. Just like he outlasted Alcaraz, he outlasts Kasper Ruud and breaks back. A long buster. Goes the way of Djokovic, both players gasping for air. And just how big a moment in this final will that turn out to be? Ruud men, well, there's uh, the final point, and what a point it was. It, both players 
I'm sure their legs are uh, getting a little heavier. And the move by Rude, taking the opportunity to hit a drive volley. It's coming up on this one. But uh, he would be gassed. Not getting far enough back for the overhead. Kind of reached that service line and went for the angled overhead. And that's an exhausted look on Djokovic's face, even with his arm fist pumped. Well, what a rally that was, as Djokovic breaks oh, back. Nole again, ringing around Chatrier. There's a fair few Serbian flags inside this magnificent court. That was the sort of rally we saw actually on multiple occasions in that extraordinary first two sets of that semi-final against Carlos Alcaraz. Particularly the back end of the second set, Djokovic said he was feeling it, he was tired at the end of the second set, but didn't see Alcaraz cramping, didn't see any signs or chinks in the armour from his opponent. We saw that Djokovic was struggling going into the third, but he's got this unique ability to manage his energy, Mark. He does. It's a wealth of experience, probably combination with a bit of science that uh, goes into winning these tournaments. Very interesting now. Overall, Rude looking a little fresher coming out to start this game. Yeah, apart from that opening service game of Djokovic, where he lost serve, has bounced back strongly in the following three or two service games. Only losing the one point. Gold dust right now. Kazel. Quick service point. And this has been some start from the Norwegian. Showing everyone why he's in a third Grand Slam final. Oh. Legend. Legend. Bazooka like. Oh, the forehands there had flames on it. 178 Ks. Yeah, and so in big matches, that's what defines the, the difference between the best the guys that are here in the latter part of the, the second week of the tournament, that they, they will go with their weapons. And rude, certainly. Maybe a little frustrated that he's lost serve in the previous game. Trying to make a difference with the forehand in this game. The 
understand that reaction from Root. It just feels at the moment in this game, Mark, that Djokovic is still recovering from that marathon point at the end of the previous game. Yeah, he, he looks flushed. Just trying to manage it right now. Getting that first serve into play is probably key. Magnificent. We know about the power showcasing the touch, too. On the count. A yeah, nice change up. Djokovic trying to absorb and recover back into the middle. Rude. He's probably played a third less drop shots uh, compared to Novak Djokovic in the tournament. That was a, a timely one. A chance to get the break back for the world number four. Gets it done. Still looking a little shaky on the overhead. But the second volley was majestic. And that was just trying, uh, trying to attain some steadiness, an opening, create an opportunity. Djokovic comes forward. And there's that the overhead. He just uh, That's the type that he more often will go with. And he's just not able to get enough bite, it seems, in the rally. He's not striking with as much ball thanks to the uh, extreme spin that Rude is striking the ball with. Novak seems off balance and uh, the ball is up around above his shoulders. Djokovic feeling it in this game, by the way. Forehand speed in this game, 112 Ks average. That's 15 Ks less than the rest of the set. And he's with new balls as well in this game, let's not forget. So he knows he's just trying to scrap through this one and get more oxygen in the lungs. It'd be a huge hold. Please. Does come through the game though, it's a massive hold for Djokovic. Serbian fans delighted. And it's 4 all first set. Now a bit more of an opportunity. There's some breathing space for Djokovic to go into recovery again. That wasn't an easy game. It certainly tested thoroughly. He knows, I know that next time it's going to happen. I told him I'm going to call already, you from yeah. there, that we, com that we communicate. Next time it happens. So don't put pressure, I do my job. Now, was he just asking about the shot clock there? I think he was uh, saying that it was two times that he's noticed. I think he said five already. 
but Damien Dumas was just saying, let me do my job. Right. Yeah. yeah. Of course, we've had data throughout the years knowing that Rafael Nadal has... It's taken more time than the 25 seconds allowed throughout the years. So you see Djokovic just stretch out here. Oh! I just hope he hasn't done any damage there. Again, Djokovic, you feel hanging on. But still, even with if he is gasping for air, he still has that unique ability to get the ball back. Yeah, and it, it's almost, um, in a way, Pete, if Rude keeps up firing the same pace, it actually is helpful for Djokovic because he can absorb. And, and so it, it's less energy uh, up the end. He, he can just... Get the ball back like he did, force Rude into playing a low volley. What? Brilliant defence from Brood. And again, a weary looking Djokovic come the end of that rally. So if you're up the other end, if you're Rude, and you're looking at Djokovic at some of these rallies at the end, the way he's reacting, it might entice you to actually try and do a little extra. It's almost like a, a trap is being laid it's will rude fall into that trap as a nice way to erase a bit of trouble well first ace not out of the woods just yet at the moment you don't quite know what point you're getting next from Djokovic Bit more pace in that one and another chance to get a break and win what would be a fourth straight game for the world number three
How concerned are you right now, Mark, as in with what we're seeing yeah, from Djokovic? Not, not overly concerned. I appreciate the, the, the effort, the toll, but it's the occasion as well. Fantastic from Rude. Djokovic again losing his footing. Okay. I give credit though to the, the Norwegian. Combination right into the corner. Yeah, and, and earning that point. And I, it, it, in the end, I feel like that uh, will be key. It's a, a tumble. He's just slid, hasn't uh, completed the the slide. But it's going to take a brave amount of play from Rude in this match. Not just this set, but the match. He's got to go out and play to win. Well, it's been a, a brutal opening set, 57 minutes on the clock. You talk about bravery, yeah, stepping yeah. up to the plate there, Kasper Ruud. And this time it's his turn to win a massive game. Holds off the, the break point. And it's a game away from taking the opener. Leads 5-4. It's a rude stepping it up there. First serve. The previous point at Juice, he came to net on game point. He was willing to pull the trigger with serve plus one and found his way to net. Key moment to hold serve. Uh, there was a response. A move by Djokovic the, the last three games, or three games back to back. Before Rude drawing a line. Well, Rude talked about fitness and physicality being a, the most Im important attribute coming into this final. And those comments look accurate right now with what we've seen in the opening hour. It's high humidity today as well, which means ball's probably fluffing up a little more. Both players seemingly struggling to hit through one another as the sunglasses are off for Tom Brady. Olivier Giroud there on the left. There's a lot of footballers in town. World Cup winners. Djokovic, though, serving to stay in the set. 4 5. What? from Kasper Ruud. Incidentally, he's been able to force Djokovic deeper in the court than what we've seen throughout the tournament. And that is bringing in the drop shot, which a couple of times now, Mark, he's played to near perfection. Djokovic, incidentally, about a metre further back. 
in the court than what he has been in previous rounds. the day. Well, it was so superb. Never give up attitude by Kasper Ruud. Strange choice of shot there by Djokovic to play a, a drop Les smash. Not a lot of touch from up Merci. there. But in the end, he stumbled Djokovic. Not so much that Rude wins the point, he was given the point. A little fortunate. But uh, is this a, an opportunity? Can that bravery step up for Rude in the next two points? That's very tidy tennis from Djokovic. What a gripping opening set this has been. Kasper Ruud showing everyone why he was one match win away from becoming the world number one at the US Open last year. I don't think there's ever been a poor player to be in three Grand Slam finals. Starting a little late from Damien Dumasois. He's at the umpire's discretion, especially when you've got the crowd cheering. It's meant to start once the crowd dies down. Look, we've, we've called many a match of Djokovic here at, at Roland Garros. I'm not sure that he is one that steps over the line too often. Mm -hmm. I think he plays it to precision in getting the clock down. I, th I think it's a, a routine for him. It was very close there. If you notice, the, the shot clock did disappear off the screens. Very good hold from Djokovic from Love 30 down. Showing his metal and mental toughness. Yeah, Mark, one question I haven't asked you is, is what did you make of Kasparu putting a little bit of pressure on the umpire? I, we've got to abide by the rules, but if Kasper is hoping that that's going to help him, then I think he's searching, overreaching not sure that his game it, it can do the job, that he needs a little help. That's my read on it. So now go back to last year's semi-final between Sasha Zverev and Rafael Nadal. I think Nadal was averaging something like 36 seconds in between the points. 
He was also slowing Zverev down off the return, and yet Zverev was circling before he served. And we were sat here saying, why is he not asking the umpire to, mm -hmm. to say something? So it, it's a balance, right? Understandable both ways. Reed asking the question and then not. Yeah, I actually think it's okay to at, mm. uh, at least just a reminder to the to the chair umpire. But I think the insinuation, if whether it was two or five, I, I think that's a little extreme. <laughs> Oh, that's a wondrous volley. Terrific footwork from the world number four. Hard to Yeah, it's a, an electric move. There's that serve plus one. Uses the feet and gets in for the to the volley before it drops below the level of the net. an electric forehand as well. It's been an extraordinary opening set. Just when you think yeah, one player is struggling, back they come. No wonder the Norwegian flag flying proud right now. Hour and seven minutes and feels like we've still got a, a fair way to go in this opening set. Let it. Premier service. And he's not looking overly tired. Maybe deciding though, shortening the point is the best bet. Coming forward at will. The, the mind games of elite sportsmen. <laughs> Both trying to get a little bit of an edge here. Um, maybe just venting a little bit. The pressure is certainly building up. We're coming to that conclusion oh, of step one. Well, Novak Djokovic at the sit down there, he was now complaining to Damien Dumasoir that he's pushing the button too early and particularly from the sit down, starting the timer too early, so feeling rushed, putting a bit of pressure on the umpire there, almost coming back at what Kasper Ruud had said earlier. I'll tell you a story actually that Sir Alex Ferguson, one of the greatest football or soccer managers ever out there. I, I, I read a story, I actually listened to an interview with a, a referee once where he berated him at half time, went berserk at him. And then they had a, a manager's meeting with, with the referees a week later. And he sat next to him and went, oh, my word, I, I, he's going to be, you know, killing me. He's going to be nonstop having a go. And he just sat down and he just said, I think you're one of the best refs out there. I, I was just trying to get an edge. And it feels a little bit like that right now between these two, that just perhaps trying to get a little bit of an edge from the umpire. 
Well, the first nudge came from Kasper Ruud. Now Djokovic just letting here, flexing maybe his muscle, his presence. Once again from Rude. And it spoke of the bravery that Rude has displayed when, more often up. when he's been holding surf with these moves towards the, the net. It, it's what is necessary when he's trying to break surf here and capture the first set. That was a few nice steps taking the ball early. I don't think just trying to extend the rally and exhaust Djokovic is the way for the title. Oh, and that is very timely. Just a second ace. Still the first set percentage. Extremely high for Djokovic, 79%. And 67% of points behind that first serve. closer to a tiebreaker and he has been the boss yeah, all tournament in the seven point shootout hmm, has he what Tiebreaker to settle this extraordinary opening set. Incidentally, here are the numbers for Djokovic over this fortnight. Five tiebreaks played, 5 1. 35 points to 12. So he's not lost many points. 13 winners and zero unforced errors. 14 and 4 on the season. Incidentally, Kasper Ruud 11 and 7 on the season. A, a vital tiebreaker against Nicholas Jarry in the first set in the quarterfinal. That's his only tiebreaker that he's played at Roland Garros in 2023. to start the breaker and what a gut punch from the serve so an increase Djokovic. in pace coming from Djokovic's end of the court matching it a very rare point in this first set where Djokovic has been able to be add a bit more zip onto the forehand up losing it. Two, zero. Yeah, it was well put together. 
Djokovic, I think under the circumstances, Pete, it's, you've got to make a quick decision. You cover the line, or do you just hold your ground and get ready? Chose well, and uh, it's had, it might have some impact to that point. First two points, in fact. See how Rude responds. Still yet to make an unforced error in tie breaks. Our role on Gauss 2023. 3-0. And I know there's a long way to go in this tiebreaker, but are those three points the reason why perhaps Djokovic is the greatest of all time? <laughs> uh, close to it. Close to it. He, he's, the value of those first three points, he's, he's aware of it. As soon as the tiebreaker started, it's lights on the guard is up tightens the screws and he wants to tighten them even further credit to rude responding wow. he's shown a lot of character in this opening set and you get the feeling he's not going to go away in this tiebreaker I mean, the level has just gone up a fair few notches. So often we talk, Mark, about players when the pressure moments come. It's actually the greats who keep their level and the others who's drop their level in those big moments. But Djokovic finds a way to rise it. Yeah, it's a, a couple of points. And you notice, Pete, that the, the, there was some braveness there by Rude. But he's forced to play a game that is not necessarily something that he plays week in, week out with. He's trying to play at a higher level, and it's certainly being matched, and if not overtaken by Djokovic in this key juncture. to that shot from Rude. Uh, I feel it was a, a must-make backhand. Well, Finally got to look at a second serve. Yeah, even, even the return of serve on the second serve, that was 120k, so middle of the box. He got around and hit the forehand, but he did wait for it to come. He's standing four plus meters behind to return first and second serves. So he's fallen back, it seems like, into what he is comfortable doing. And I'll say he's gone back into his shell. That shell has provided the ability to reach three finals. But he's having to step up against arguably the greatest ever. He's asked, we're asking him to, or we're wondering, can he play at this level when it counts most? Djokovic is confident at playing this level. He's probably happy that he's in the tiebreaker. Come on, bring it on, Casper. Have you got any of it left? <laughs> he said he knows how to manage his energy, manage the situation, manage Grand Slam finals. And we've seen that here. Look to be struggling at four all. He's found energy 
from somewhere and now has five set points. Novak Djokovic showing everyone why perhaps he is the greatest. An epic set of tennis goes the way of the serve. An hour and 21 minutes of brutal ball striking. You have to give a lot of credit to Kasper Ruud who threw everything at the world number three. But it's Djokovic who takes it on the tie break. Everyone talking about what they have just witnessed. That's uh, Goran Djokovic, uh, uncle, and uh, the brother is, which is Novak's dad, in the blue shirt. Probably very relieved to see his son take that uh, opening set. And even Tom Brady has had to have a break and a breather after that one. I mean, it's amazing, isn't it? I mean, Mike Tyson was here for the semi-finals, had him in the corner of the court. We know Tyson's a huge Djokovic fan. You were telling me that he was in the lifts nearby us. So he's here again, maybe not in the stands. Some big names and, and big hitters in the sporting world on Djokovic's side. I mean, it was amazing that the previous Olympics in the Olympic Village, he was the most popular sportsman out of everyone, mm -hmm. everywhere he went. in the Olympic Games. They will be in this city next year. And that is the one thing missing off the CV for Novak Djokovic. There's not a lot missing. 38 Masters titles more than anyone else. 93 ATP Tour titles in total. And looking to lead outright in Grand Slam titles after today. Kindest of bounces since the apology. I wonder where the mind is at for Ruud. As uh, Mark was saying, probably the best set of tennis he's played all championships and ends up on the losing side. And ends up on the losing side of that game. Love service hold for Djokovic. And incidentally, just been given some numbers from that tiebreaker from, from Djokovic. He actually took. 1k off the forehand and backhand in the rallies but he upped it severely off the return first serve return 117 compared to 109 throughout the set second serve return 120 compared to 108 but overall it was the percentage place he went from hitting the backhand down the line 27 percent of the time to only eight percent cross court Talk about him being a chess player, a poker player. Knows what to do and what which percentages to play in the biggest moments in matches.
In the context of, of the match, Mark, how important is this game right here for Kasper Root? It will help steer him. I, it, you know, he, how heavily involved he remains in this second set, which ultimately will provide some context to the match. At losing that first serve to love was not necessarily helpful to his psyche. Nor those two points. See how it comes. Such a tight opening set. Suddenly it's one way traffic. Dangerous times for Kasper Ruud. A nice lift for Rude. Really an angle with the backhand to set the forehand up. Gazzard. Yeah, creates the angle by coming around the perhaps the outside of the ball. And a little earlier, maybe than in front of his strike zone. his experience again Djokovic aware of the battle that took place in set one wins the first game concisely and goes out after the second serve oh, look out. First break point well saved still want to negotiate Survives for now in this game. Down. Probably the, the daylight, the joy that Rude has had in the baseline battle, that forehand to forehand duel. He seems like he's maybe got the slight edge. Let from his service. Struggled with that shot. A little more time to set himself there. But again, it's another fantastic return. 
Yeah, returning position on the second serve. He is closer to the baseline, if not on top of it. The point of difference between the both players. I mentioned earlier that Rude still stands about 4.5 4 metres. He's dialed in right now off the return. He's upped it with the pace as well, as I was saying, during the tiebreaker. How big will he go with this second serve return? Oh. Oh, a couple of opportunities missed. And that tells its own story. He knows that he's... Got his opponent a little bit on the ropes right now. He doesn't want to let him off the hook. Another awesome rally. And once again, it's that man who comes out on top. Well, I, I felt that Rude's backhand up the line was probably the best backhand that he has struck with a slice all tournament long, and it still comes back with offence. Such a privileged job here, don't we? Having watched Rafael Nadal throughout the years do things that didn't look possible. We're now watching Novak Djokovic do things that don't look possible. Breaks early for a two-love lead in set two. Cleverness. It, uh, the control of Djokovic. Root's playing a few backhand slices, and that generally means that he wants to try and slow the play down. He wants to recover, and clearly at the end of that point, he just ran out of juice in the legs. Couldn't push out to the forehand. Having gone to net, had to play the overhead as well. Djokovic, not just winning the mental battle, the physical has now turned in his favour. And all of that, Mark, made him more extraordinary when you consider he's 36 years of age. You, you forget it because he still looks like he's 24. The body doesn't seem to have changed that much. Incidentally, would be the oldest ever champion if he was to win today. Already second oldest finalist in this tournament's history since 1925. We know just how meticulous he is about what goes into his body, how much he cares about every aspect of his health. face Yeah. 
Cal because Legends of all industries watching this encounter here on court, Philip Chatrier. And they are witnessing greatness right now. Djokovic beginning to motor away. Backs up the break for a three-love lead. Last 30 points one. Safe to say, momentum with one player right now. Rude is concerned Cousins tactically in. here, Mark. What should he do? I mean, it, it's the ultimate question. Against arguably the greatest player of all time. Oh, keep going with that tr trust. That the, the style that he played. Set one. The purpose. Uh, that he was the tactics Goes up. that'll give him the, the best chance in in set two it, it does now the, the balance though Djokovic seems settled he seems more comfortable he's now aware of how rude he's he's absorbed the style of play oh. my fear is if Casper goes back into his shell and plays reactive tennis, this could slip away. Ah! Is it far away? And incidentally, a reminder of the task that Rude was facing today. Djokovic looking to win a third slam in a row that he has entered, or at least been allowed to enter. 20 match wins in a row at Grand Slam level. Last defeat was here against Rafael Nadal in the quarterfinals last year. Yeah, good to point out that Djokovic wasn't at the US, that the final of the US Open was between Alcaraz and Root. Djokovic wasn't able to play. Didn't play US Open, won Oz Open. Now about to win the French, possibly. <laughs> the 
Rude on the board. Yeah, it, it, it's hard not yeah, to, to think that. And uh, uh, probably us as, as commentators, I'm sure there's plenty of people at home that think, oh, this, this is really looking decent, looking decent now for, for Novak. For him, he has to stay in the present, though, present. And that's actually something that Novak Djokovic has said repeatedly. He actually said it after the win over Alcaraz. The important thing heading into this match was stay in the present. Yeah. I think it's almost probably going to be a slogan, I think. Of course, Jim Curra used to always say, control the controllables. Yeah. He's starting to hold serve more comfortably now. Djokovic, we saw that again against Karen Hachanov. First set, he was scrapping in a lot of service games. And then had a patch where he just seemed to run through service games either to 15 or to love. Oh. Oh. Let me <laughs> Hugh Grant, big fan of his tennis. Right back at him, big fan of his films. <laughs> Just picking up something that hasn't been the case throughout this final, or throughout the day. It's a big strike, isn't it, from Djokovic? Still getting the timing right, despite the wind. Show you, human. First double. We'll lift the spirits of his opponent. Still only the one break. So an important hold again for Djokovic, hence the reaction. Re-establishes the three-game cushion in set two. 4-1 lead. A 
playing the key points well on that service game. Djokovic maintaining that one break lead. And that, I think that goes to, uh, to, to highlight managing his his energy levels and his emotions, Pete, it, through a five-set match. He, the hard work through the first set, picking up that crucial break of serve for two love. But then he can take his breathers just to try and maintain that one break lead. That was a clean game. Maybe on the change of ends here, this is where he starts to, to maybe give it a bit of a lift to try to go for a second service break. He's so used to just clear blue skies throughout these championships. I did anticipate some rain towards the back end of them, but fortunately it hasn't arrived. It's still very warm today despite the cloud cover. Yeah, both players really have gone, gone early to those ice towels around the neck. Djokovic also placing one just under his shirt and then uh, icing his quads down. Delight that is. A little bit of hand skills from Root. Mm, clearly not anticipating the line ball. Yeah, maybe not quite the balance. Yeah. Slid past the point of contact. So that maybe didn't help Djokovic. Bit of a wobbly forehand, but it wins. Steady part of this second set. Both players can serve relatively comfortably. You might say Rude has steadied the ship after losing that tiebreaker convincingly and then going three love down. Can he get the break back? Yeah, 100% that he, he needed to play a couple of steady service games. But now is the time to make the move. 
some instruction coming from Goran. over the ball. Yeah, he's able to, with the forehand up the line, push Rude behind, further, deeper behind the baseline. And that uh, invites Djokovic to go on the attack. The Shakhtar crowd like an underdog, they like to lift the player who's down. And they're responding to the tennis from Rude. And he hasn't really got forward a whole lot in this second set with success. Again, trying to remain brave enough to move forward. the game to Djokovic. So he's answering. Stepping it up. Accelerated with that number of forehands and again ventured to net. That's the braveness. He's had success. That's three of four net points for Rude in this set, I believe. in the yards. Everyone thought the first backhand was going long. Djokovic doing well to react to it because I think it landed plumb on the line. Well done. 40 millimetres in that one. Just a fourth unforced error from Rude off that wing in this set, but could be a costly one. Can the chance of Nolle ring around? It feels like there's far more Djokovic fans inside Chatria today than what there has been throughout the tournament. job pinning Rude deep in that yeah, rally. Yeah. The Serbian fans I was talking about, we have a, an amazing view here on Chatrier. You can see the top tier and you can look both sides. There's a lot of red, blue and white. There's everyone desperate from a Djokovic point of view to witness history. Oh. 
Terrific defence from Djokovic. Djokovic. And an important hold. He's under a little bit of pressure there at 15.30, but passes the test. And there's a game away from a two sets to love lead in this final. Well, it was one of those games. I felt, Pete, that Rude was mounting the challenge. At 15.30, he, he reached that juncture, two points back to back by willing to move forward and that bravery that I was talking about. But then it just disappeared on the final two points to surrender the game. So it's there, but he's it's just taking that one extra step. It's not out of the set still, not out of uh, the, the match either, but it's got to rest up here on this change of ends, Kaspar Ruud, and then mount a mighty challenge in the following two games. Incidentally, if Rude does find himself losing this set, his record from two sets to love down, won once, lost 16 times. The only win coming against Mackenzie McDonald at the US Open in 2020. So it would be unlikely to do it against one of the greatest of all time. Big moments in this final. Controlled again by the Norwegian. And is this a must win set for Rude? This. Bearing in mind what I just said. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that held a bit of weight with me, those uh, comments. Oh. Seeing the ball. On that return of surf, 195 Ks was the quality. The first serve from Rude Djokovic, seeing it nice and early. that one maybe surprised that it was such a, a slow bunt of a return too much time yeah and going to a small target as well it just barely missed wide but that's what he's feels like he's forced into hitting such a small target on the court let, let from himself. Himself. Line return, and I've said that a few times this afternoon. Djokovic circling his prey. Looks like the, the signal is just keep going, that momentum starting to build. Two set points. Hold the count.
gutsy from Root. Calvin. So that one is middle of the court, not overly dissimilar to one that he pushed wide, but I think there was a, a bit more on the ball, the pace coming from Djokovic. A bit more of an automatic response by Rood. That's another quality point. Once again, playing with controlled aggression. It's interesting, this second set, I asked you at the beginning of it, should he change anything? He has actually changed quite a bit. We were seeing him loop the forehand up. It's a lot lower now. Using the slice backhand a lot more as well. That's a very good hold from Kasper Ruud. Saves a couple of set points and will ask the question of his opponent as to whether Novak Djokovic can serve out this second set. Dare I say, maybe this game is a little like the first set tiebreaker. Playing the key points is uh, what his, it's been his forte all tournament long, Djokovic. These four points that he needs to win on serve. in the rally. It's tough though, isn't it, Mark? I know, I know you're wanting Rude to press here, but getting the balance right against such a good counter-punch, not easy. And in particular, when we produce those uh, stats of most clay court wins, uh, most tournament victories on clay, he's produced such a, a strong style and brand on clay. Once again, it just feels like Djokovic can up it. Finds a little extra pace on the forehand. Hard to zero. That one, one, five, eight. Set points in the previous game. Casper Rude this time vent to his box. First time really that we've heard speaking in his mother tongue. Clearly venting frustration. Three more set points for the world number three. <laughs> Novak Djokovic. Yeah. A it set away from history. Once again, See making everything look so easy on the tennis court. Played the big points so well and takes the second set 6-3 in 43 minutes.
Yeah, he said it himself. We need to play the greatest oh, match I've ever played. And he was close to it in that first set. <laughs> it was and still, good. and okay, still it's, lost it. It was. Yeah. Yeah. It was decent. In terms of how he plays this set, I'll, I'll ask you that in a few moments' time, because he did play that second set differently to how he played the first. In terms of net clearance on the forehand, 93 centimetres in the first set, if you remember. He was hacking it up high to, to Djokovic, getting him out of a rhythm early on. In that second set, 66 centimetres, so he's hitting a lot flatter. Whether or not that's, again, the energy that he has, he, he wants to shorten the points. And he hit the backhand slice 32% compared to 19%. And that's actually a comparison from previous rounds. So, again, he's trying to get Djokovic out of a rhythm. Where should he go tactically with these shots? Should he be hitting it back up higher again on the forehand? Well, there was no joy with, with whether it was conscious uh, change up. It's just here, there, everywhere, Djokovic. Has there ever been a better mover on a tennis court? Kazakh Hodge. Yeah, it's the, the recovery. And just that intuitively coming back into the middle of the court. And then a quick move to chase down that backhand passing shot. Yeah, just to emphasize how good Djokovic is at absorbing or at least redirecting. It's about the, the forehand speed being lower but quicker for Rude in, in the second set. Djokovic's speed was up 7Ks with it. It's a challenge by Rude. I don't regret that challenge if it's caught the line here. Called anyway, long and confirmed by Damien Dumasois. Getting to Hawkeye, 24 millimeters long. Again, they're going after the first serve return. Very good hold, though, for Rude. As I say, only once before has he come from two sets to love down. Can he do it in one of the biggest matches of his life against one of the greatest players of all time, if not the greatest? It's a special city. It's a city that Novak Djokovic used to say in the past he had a love affair with. Sometimes it's love, sometimes it's hate. I feel in recent years it's been more love for the Serb. I think he's had more love as well since learning French and displaying the, the tenacity that the French so love, the character. Although he has been booed a couple of times this week, and I loved his answer in the press conference. I was telling you about it earlier. You've been booed by the public several times, including when you won the second game off Carles in that third set. How do you react to that? And Djokovic's reaction was, I don't mind, followed by smiling. It's not the first, probably not the last. I'll just keep winning. Touché. Sumptuous volley. Your yeah, half ex expected him to whip out some shades. Put them on after he said 
the answer to that question. Well, he could do the same after this volley. Ball comes up the middle of the court, mounts his attack. Oh, just a reaction. Gets that racket open. The face of the racket. Djokovic. Just crowding himself was rude. Looking for the forehand. And it's funny, isn't it? Just seeing shot to the, the box there. Yelena, if you remember, midway through that first set, the nails were being bitten. Now looking a lot more relaxed. And it's the uh, Norwegian camp. A little more edgy. Quite Zero. remarkable. The web was woven by Djokovic bringing him in. And that was a, a decent forehand pass. Rude. Stretching. It was a, a stiff, straight arm for that volley. Did very well to land it into play. And another. Very tidy volley. 13 from 18 today at the net. Certainly coming forward more often than he has done throughout the tournament. And you have to give him credit, don't you, Mark? In, he has tried different things, knowing that his usual brand of tennis sat deep in the court, wasn't going to win it today. Every aspect of Djokovic's game seemingly getting better and better. That was a shot that he was struggling with early on in this final. Now making a, a difficult overhead look easy. Got the wrist snap on that one. Always going to be a tough game. This one that he survived the very first game to open the third set. This is another tough game. This is where he didn't navigate last year's final. Surrendered serve early in each of the three sets. And that very difficult to play catch up. Oh. There's so nothing Novak Djokovic can't do. On Gallant. 150 case. 
I mean, just how do you play against him? We've seen Rue try the slice. We've seen him come forward. We've seen him try height on the forehand. Djokovic with an early break point. Oh, but the error coming. He knows he's close. Down. Tennis from Rude. And the fact he dropped the backhand short helped him out. Yeah, no, uh, that, just having a, a look up to the sky, bewildered that uh, the ball held up. Saves the break point. Puts his nose back in front. Ball. In set three. Broodman, two jeux. So super effort by Kaspar Rude. Tested in both service games of his to start the third set, just to maintain that lead. A slender lead, two games to one. Victory belongs to the most tenacious, as uh, the statement that sits above Court Philippe Chatrier here. And tenacious is a virtue that Novak Djokovic has displayed, surviving that tense opening set. Talking tenacious, just saw a little shot of Mike Tyson once again. Here yeah, watching Chatry, of course, cheered Djokovic on in his victory over Alcaraz. Not sitting as close to the court this time. So the level for Novak Djokovic in the, the second set was decent. There was no real dip. And uh, this is a, maybe an opportunity also for Kaspar Ruud that by holding serve, just taking that slender lead, could see a slight dip by Djokovic.
quick start to this game. And of course, when that dip occurs, it's trying to create something and make the most of those uh, opportunities that might not last long, might be just a, a few points or, or a game. Crunch. 40 it's amazing how he builds his way into matches. These types of strikes we just weren't seeing in the first four or five games. There's another yeah, right into the corner. Not of approval from his wife. 159 case. Yeah, so five winners now off the forehand wing in the four games that we've played. Zero from Kaspar Ruud. The weapon for Kaspar Ruud is the forehand. So if he's in this set, hasn't been able to use it to this stage, two games all, this is where he's got to start to activate it because just waiting, playing passive, is not going to do it for him. Oof. Notice as well, Novak's got a new fan in his box. Yeah, looks like his, his daughter Tara has come out to watch. Something on Mum's lap right now. And right now it feels like almost Djokovic has Rude wrapped around his little finger, but I know he said earlier on. Tara has him wrapped around his little finger. She's, she's got to be one of the only people on the planet that can say that. So he can't help but give in to his daughter all the time. And his wife. And perhaps his wife, yeah. the ball to go long. It's an excellent overhead. Hard the girls. Again, you have to remind yourself what a tough year it, it has been for Rude and the level of tennis he's producing here. Certainly I didn't expect it coming into these championships. Oh. Many might have thought could have been a one-season wonder, but he's proving a very strong point. I certainly didn't think it would be a one-season wonder. He's, he's too good. You look at every area of his game. Movement, his uh, on-court intelligence, forehand is huge. Oh. Too big on that occasion. Do you see him as a future champion here, Mark? If not today? Uh, that, that's a tough one when you've still got Djokovic for a few, what we would assume, a couple of more years. You've got Alcaraz. Not going to match up well with these two. Uh, uh, coming forward. It wasn't quite enough on the approach. Yeah, it's again, it's never a hundred percent record when you come forward. It's 
applying it on some key points where you pick up the benefits. And just responding there with a bit of his own hot sauce of a forehand. Was passed by Djokovic. Snapped a forehand by him. Super serve. Yeah, Just a third ace for Rude. He's hanging with Djokovic in this third set. Rude man. Needs 3-2. And these two unforced errors. Novak just increasing that balance on the winner's side. Crowd trying to help elevate what seems like a bit more of a, a pro Nole crowd. I'm sure, there's a many a fan supporting Kaspar Rude, who has done an incredible job in this set, fighting through three tense service games, giving him a, some hope of capturing a set. No, But what do you make of all the, the sporting greats that we've seen inside the arena? A lot of them connected to, to Novak Djokovic. Zlatan Ibrahimovic is someone who he seemed to spark up a friendship at at the, uh, the Qatar World Cup. We know about Mike Tyson really enjoying watching Novak Djokovic play. We've seen Tom Brady in his box. If he's sorted tickets for them all, is that a sign of how confident Djokovic was coming into this, getting other sporting greats to witness perhaps sporting history this is going to be what worked at this stage absolutely sporting history and I think you other sporting greats want to witness those special moments Second serve ace. Well, whether Ruth thought that one was going long. Keep mentioning, of course, sporting greatness, sporting history. Still a bit of work to do for Djokovic. Still no breaks in this third set. S'il vous plaît.
Since the Mavericks team just wanting him to stay dialed in. Clearly, Tara had enough. Caught a glimpse, might be back a little later. Djokovic, the yeah, forehand Djokovic. up the line with some extra heat. The no fuss service game from the Serb. Yeah, giving himself every opportunity. Novak just moving through his games with more ease in this set and see if he can mount a bit of a challenge. He's been close. Or, or mounts another challenge. Rude has squeezed by three service games. Taken by Rude. This may be one of the forehands that we saw in the first set where Novak wasn't really striking it firmly. There seemed to be a bit more rotation but less speed on the ball. That opened. It was an open invitation for Rude. Called fault, then actually corrected by the line judge. 22 millimeters in, no complaints from Djokovic. Don't hear that all that often now with the umpires or linesmen correcting themselves. A little easier to do on clay. Oh, well, you could hear the nose there from Rude, knew that the forehand wasn't good enough. Especially with the gap up the line. Family there watching on. Girlfriend, two sisters, Caroline and Charlotte, are here as well. This is Maria. This is girlfriend sat in the middle who is a well, has a degree in psychology but also works in sports nutrition. Useful girlfriend to have. Doesn't get the drop shot right, Rude. You'd never guess they're the Scandinavian box, would you? Yeah, from, looking from afar. Uh, with the Blonde hairs uh, yeah. of the of the ladies, blue-shirted fellows in the the <laughs> front row. It's a team. It is a team. Yes, yeah, certainly. Yeah, I think the blue-shirted fellows. A few of them not from Scandinavia. Again, yeah. holding serve route. And rightly, this crowd getting behind the Norwegian. Showing some character, as he has done throughout this contest. Leads 4-3 in the third. J 
gee, that's, uh, I, I think, a really impressive four games for the Norwegian to go up 4-3. Got to think of the fact that he's down two sets to love. I think the crowd also, they, they take a bit of a, 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 a breather themselves. And so sometimes the, the general feeling out there on the court you can take that on board and the level of your play drops but he's been able to fight through three impressive games and that was the smoothest of serves in the fourth set and you just never know pete got to give yourself the opportunity to see how novak's energy levels are in this next game And so often we talk oh, about experience, please. particularly in Grand Slam finals, something that Djokovic talked a lot about. He said, not going to win this match with sheer experience. You have to get the tactics right. As uh, the famed roll on Garros Mexican wave goes around Chatrier. But in terms of Kasper Ruud, well, he fell away in last year's final, lost the, the third set to six love. But perhaps what we've seen in this third set is that the experience from what he had last year. Uh, what he's learned. Yes, yeah, I, I, I think that's con contributed. Djokovic uh, has really pushed him in the return when he's returned the, the rude Merci, serve. But Djokovic has played the key points, the vital points on his serve very well. He's eased through his own service games, Djokovic, in, in this set. Winning the first few points, creating that buffer. Well, David Dumas was trying to stop the uh, the roll on Garros wave, but not having a lot of success. They're enjoying themselves here on court, Philip Chatrier. Djokovic being made to wait. Serving here 3-4. the crowd gets them behind yeah, Ruth. Okay. move the right way did rude and just blasted at that forehand drilled it Too. It's amazing, isn't it? You just get little feelings, moments, the crowd sense perhaps. There's a turning point here. And incidentally, that's not booze, that's rude. From the Chatrier crowd. Okay, it's, can he amp it up in this next point? Kaspar Ruud has opened the door. you believe it and now it might be boost rather than rude <laughs> oh it's a little nasty isn't it that that goes over that was some fine depth by rude Oh, 
harder. And it's just going to rub salt into the wound of the net court in the previous point. And as I said before, there's a lot of Djokovic fans here. They're responding to a couple of those boos and roods. Just want to lift their man. using the angle with Rude so far back in the court. Yeah, exactly. If he tried to drive it Down with any the... depth, then it's more in the wheelhouse for Kaspar Rude to go on the offensive. So now the time violation comes. You have one warning before you lose a serve. Casper Rude wanted that in the first set. Seems a little more rowdy inside Chatrie. Unaffected by the crowd. <laughs> Don't poke the bear. I wonder whether that might have uh, that time violation might have just Get activated something in Djokovic. Only eight points away from victory. It's almost King Arthur-esque there, with lifting the racket. Like Excalibur and the sword. Oh. Two games away. Oh, it's a ripper. And having been down, love 30, got the net caught. Since then, he's raised his level. And these are dangerous times for Rude, you feel. Momentum now with Novak Djokovic. Sense that in his team as well. His box have been standing up after the last few points. Ridiculous defense earlier on in the point. He can't apply the finishing touch. Kaza. Credit to Rude for resetting. Oh, talk about managing your nerves. Remain cool, Rude. Ball 
striking from Rude. He's not done yet. Hard to go. No, that was another big second serve that he sent down into the body. Using the forehand, going with the strongest part of his game. Sure. Whether that was a, a dodgy bounce, and perhaps contributed to the miss hit long. Maybe a tad surprised that off of that first serve, Novak was able to drive it back and force Rude on the back foot. Yeah, cheap point. I mean, yeah. it shows you how well. Djokovic has been returning because that almost comes as a shock and he finally misses a return particularly on such a big point as we tick into a fourth hour in this final most of that was a very dramatic brutal hour and 21 minutes first set Kasparu trying to make this match go even longer. And he might just do that. He's a game away from stealing this third set. It's a really good hold because the crowd and Novak's box were getting excited. But it's Rude who leads 5-4. And so the arm wrestle continues between the number three and four seed in this final. This is a, a tensely played third set. Kasper Rude giving himself a, an opportunity here, Pete. You think uh, as he steps up after this change of ends, maybe go looking for his attributes. This is where the, the time is nigh. Try to look for that forehand and see if he can bring back the bravery. And a couple of uh, moves forward. Power please. Feared it might be a one-sided final. Still might be a straight sets victory for Novak Djokovic, but he has been pushed in this final. Rude has certainly stepped up this year, especially when you compare to his performance last year. And he's forcing Djokovic to try and serve to stay in this set. 4-5. Such an important point, isn't it? Serving to stay in a set. And just like that, a little bit of pressure taken off in this service game. Ten face for the serve. Look, not a bad option. I don't consider that a, a poor miss. We haven't seen a whole lot coming from that end of Rude. He played a, a sprinkle of a few of them in the first set. But that might be something that he could bring into play as we're moving to the back end of the set. Closer to a tiebreaker. I should say tie break. Potato, potato. 
don't break her a tie. <laughs> we break the tie. To 11 in that game. A little shake of the head from Casper Ruud. Two aces, a couple of big forehands. Thanks for coming. And it's 5 all. And the pressure thrown back down the other side of the net. Right on to the baseline. Is there all counts? We're talking about Djokovic's level in this set. You have to praise Rude for his level as well. And if there is a slight dip, that's where the trouble arises. Six points in a row. The finish line coming into view for the world number three. Perhaps soon to be world number one again. Wow. Taking tennis to another stratosphere. Zero count. Hmm. Is this deja vu from the first set? We got kind of to this juncture uh, as well, and that's where the play, the level of Djokovic lifted. And that forehand was just a, a cracker. 154, Ks. Uncle certainly enjoyed it too. Three break points for Djokovic. Djokovic breaks, and in a few moments' time, will serve for number 23. Simply glorious. What a tennis player. Lead 6-5. Six, Just like that, Mark, eight points in a row. Yep. I don't think he should be putting ice around the, his shoulders or his neck right now. He doesn't want to cool off. He needs to remain on fire because <laughs> he was just sensational in that game. He talked about maybe a, a possible dip in Kasper Ruud. There, there wasn't any. He, he did everything in that last game. He was beaten by three cold winners from Novak Djokovic. separated himself in that game oh, and uh, what a game ahead now for Djokovic to serve this match out. Mark in the sit down there we, we saw a couple of fans with a sign saying 
Novak Djokovic, greatest of all time, 23. If he gets to 23, is he the greatest of all time for you? Yeah, for, for me, I, for a number of years, uh, as those the trio of them were vying for that title, uh, I feel like that that's really the, the separating factor to determine, you know, who sh deserves greatest of all time tag. Serving for a third Roland Garros title and a 23rd Grand Slam title. Incidentally, when we talk about greatest of all time, we are talking about men's tennis. Margaret Gun. Court with 24. Zero. Serena with 23. Djokovic, though, three points away. Just caught the back end of uh, Goran, maybe uh, get the, the ball up on the serve. At moments when he has Hard that zero. serve, not that we've seen it to today, but he can elevate it out into the court. Makes it tougher for him to extend up. And another serve that gives him three championship points for history. Nine points in a row at the back end of set three. Merci. Les joueurs sont prêts. Merci. S'il vous plaît. Oh, would you believe it? Everyone was ready to celebrate. Well, all the Djokovic fans were anyway. But Rude clings on. Oh, boy. Almost finished on the overhead that he began the match missing two of them. Please, s'il vous plaît, mesdames et messieurs, jusqu'à la fin du match, un peu de calme. Novak Djokovic does what no man has done before. He wins a 23rd Grand Slam title to perhaps confirm himself as the greatest ever.
took tennis to otherworldly levels in all the big moments. He is a player like no other. Novak Djokovic. A third role on Garros crowd and becomes the first man to win all four majors at least three times. And when it mattered most, he had it all. Defeats Kasparud in three straight sets. You have to give the Norwegian credit. The first set was simply sensational. But it goes the way of the soon-to-be world number one once again. 7-6, 6-3, 7-5. Herb, just breathtaking and talk about emotion that he has played with uh, all tournament long uh, uh, there's going to be some massive hugs taking place in, in that player box that's where Novak is moving towards but PD gave it it all gave it all gave it everything in that particular match and uh, probably learned from his experience going for the calendar slam that was able to manage the effort, the energy reserves to get over the line. Of course, switch some of his team coming into this year. There were perhaps question marks due to that. But the formula he's found in 2023 has been the right one. It must be wonderful for him there with Tara and Stefan, his two children. Mum, dad, wife, and Tom Brady, of course. And a big warm hug for Diana and Sergeant. And his uncle, Goran. Is it tennis history? It's sporting history, and you can tell that by the faces we saw in the crowd today. Can you put into words what he's achieved in his career, what we've just witnessed today? What he will? Be, do you think he will at the, the ceremony that's coming? Just what he's achieved, you know, to get to 23. I, I, you know, just getting to 23, being able to... He has come up through this era that has included you know, two other champions that deserve the tag of greatest to, of all time a, as well. But for me, this this balance of Grand Slam victories is a, a, the tie break. For me, is the, the deciding factor. Of course, the other two are brilliant champions, as is Rod Laver, as is Roy Emerson, as is Pete Sampras, that are on that greatest uh, or slams vict victories. But he has set himself apart by taking the title today. And of course, attentions might turn to the calendar slam now. He's won the first two slams of the year. It was a, a 21st Grand Slam match win in a row. It means he's now won three Grand Slams in a row as yeah. well, having not been able to play at the US Open the back end of last year. Yeah, heading on to surfaces now. Yannick Noah backstage. Gilles Moraton there as well. But heading to the grass of Wimbledon, he has succeeded. The, the transition is not as difficult these days. <laughs> Look at that special jacket that already has 23 adorned. A reminder, he's won Wimbledon seven times as well. He'll be hunting an eighth title there, but for now, he will enjoy these very special moments. Roared on by a crowd who was certainly with him a little more than his opponent because there's just so many Serbian flags, and he is a legend in sport, not only tennis. Yeah, it's not just the Roland Garros title. It's not just the third trophy that he has won here. What, what sets it apart is that it's Grand Slam. 
2023. Finaliste du simple messieurs Roland Garros 2023, il disputait sa troisième finale en grand chelem. La deuxième Roland Garros, le Norvégien Kasper Ruud. In the men's Rude. singles final 2023, Kasper Ruud. Vainqueur du simple messieurs Roland Garros 2023. Il obtient son troisième titre à Roland Garros. Le 23e en grand chelem. Le premier joueur masculin. Roland Garros, Roland Garros for the third time. Novak Djokovic. And for the 23rd time at Grand Slam level. 23rd Grand Slam title. Novak Djokovic. Mesdames, Messieurs, en l'honneur du vainqueur, l'hymne national serbe. Mesdames et Messieurs, le national anthem.